Should you paint in just one style or should you experiment with painting in many different styles? That's a question I, I get asked a lot by artists. And I actually was asked just a couple of weeks ago in one of the Zoom meetings with a number of students who are taking my online courses. And so that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Should you experiment with many different styles of painting or should you pick one? And if so, when should you pick one? Um, but before we do that, um, I just would love it if you would take a moment and you'd hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you like my content and you would like to see more of it. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tim Packer um, and I'm actually a pretty successful artist, although that wasn't always the case. And I started out like many of you as a kid. I loved art and that was my dream was to be an artist. I ended up graduating um, in graphic design from college and was a starving artist for several years before coming to the realization that I just wasn't talented enough um, to make a living as an artist. So I gave up on the dream. I joined the Toronto Police Force and I did that for almost 20 years. And then in my mid thirties, um, I decided I was gonna give this one more try uh, and decided to really get serious about pursuing my art again. Well, it wasn't easy and it didn't happen overnight, but I've been able to create a very successful career. I've generated earnings of over two and a half million dollars from the sale of my work in the last 20 years. Um, and now my mission has, has been to actually share everything I've learned with people who share that same dream. So if you have the dream of making your living as an artist, of going into your studio, doing what you love, creating art, and then actually making a good living for that, well, this is the channel for you. Um, and as I said, that's become my mission in life now is to share everything I've learned to help other people achieve that dream. So I'm sure many of you have been told before that if you really want to have success in selling your work, you need to pick a certain style. People need to know who you are and what your work is like. And so often artists will kind of do that they'll, they'll look at the different types of work that they're creating they'll pick the one that they think is is the most popular or is kind of the best right now um, and then they'll just stick with that and spend the rest of their career trying to market that work in that style um, and that can actually be one of the worst things you can do for your career I'll tell you a little bit about my story. When I when I left the police force to paint full time, I was a high realism portrait painter um, and painted watercolor and oil portraits. And that got me elected as a senior signature member of the Canadian Institute of Portrait Artists. It also got me elected to the Canadian Society of Painters and Watercolor. And I actually, over a couple of years, developed a pretty good business of painting portraits. Um, but the problem was, I reached a point where I hated painting portraits. I'd initially loved painting people the way that I wanted to paint them. But as I got more and more into doing commission portraits, I realized I was painting other people's people the way they wanted me to paint them, not the way I wanted to paint them. Um, and I almost settled with just sticking with that. I thought I've made my bed, I may as well lie in it. But luckily I had a friend of mine who gave me a kick in the butt when I needed it. Um, and just basically said to me, because what I'd said to him was that I really love painting landscapes, but my landscapes were nowhere as good as my portraits. Um, and my friend Neville Clark basically said to me, if you want to paint landscapes, you paint freaking landscapes. Uh, but who told you it would be easy? And, and what made you think you'd be good at it right away? You need to invest the time, effort, and sweat blood over these landscapes like you do over your portraits. So as I said, that gave me the kick in the butt that I needed. And what I did for about the next two or three years was I continued to paint some portraits just to keep the money coming in. And then I was totally in process mode. I was all over the map stylistically painting landscapes. I also dabbled in painting florals, uh, even some abstracts, some still life. But I was, I was spending about half my time in the studio just experimenting and trying different subject matter, different media, different stylistic approaches, 
so that my work was all over the map. Now at this time as well, I was actually showing in a lot of art festivals where, you know, you have your tent or your booth and I would have, you know, one or two portrait examples there because I would, I would have that to try um, to drum up some portrait business. And then I would have all of my other work. And it often looked like my tent was filled with the art of 10 different artists. I mean, one friend of mine actually half jokingly asked me if I was schizophrenic uh, because he said it looked like there was 50 different artists trying to get out of me. And I actually received a lot of advice from other artists at that time, very well-meaning that they said that, you know, that all of my work was, was fairly attractive and the public seemed to like it, but I would have much better success selling if I just picked one style and one subject and stuck with that. And I just kind of knew intuitively that 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 wasn't the answer that what i was searching for was was something that that the public would not only like but would love and that would be distinctive and my own style and so i kept pushing i kept doing these shows with lots of different um subject matter lots of different styles i was painting in oils i was painting in watercolor i was doing some pastels doing some collage and what eventually happened is gradually my work started to kind of narrow down to to it to a real focus um, with a certain type of landscape painted in a certain way um, where I loved the process. And so this is really important. What you ideally want to get to is you want to get to the point where you can create your own unique voice, um, but where you love the process. So that means you absolutely love going into the studio to create your work. And that was not the case with my portraits. Um, so not only you love the process, but you love the finished work that that when you look at it, you just you know, you say, yes, that's me as an artist. That's what I've done. And you're you're happy to stand in front of your work and say, yes, that's my work. And this is so important. You need to have the public love the work or at least enough of the public to love the work um, so that you can actually make a living from it. Uh, and what I see an awful lot of artists do is they stop and they pick a certain style when the public just likes their work. The problem with that is there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of artists out there creating work that the public likes. There are much, much fewer artists creating work that the public loves. And when you are creating work that the public likes, you are competing with, with all of these other artists who are producing work that the public likes. But when you create work that the public loves, where you also have created your own unique voice, then the world will beat a path to your door to buy your work. And that's what actually happened to me. Once my current style started evolving and started to kind of peek out from the, from the whole kind of gamut of all the work that I was doing, the response was immediate and it was overwhelming. In the very first show that I did where I actually um, exhibited a large body of this work, this was the Toronto Art, Art Festival, I did almost $30,000 in sales in four days. And that was more than I had sold in the entire previous year doing a whole pile of festivals. So that's the message that I want um, to get across. It's like, should you eventually kind of pick a certain style and stick with that? And the answer is yes, but only when you've reached the point where that style is something where you love the process, where you love the finished work and the public loves the finished work. Until that happens, then by all means, I mean, you can pick a couple styles or a certain style of work that, that you know is selling okay and spend some of your time on that but I would strongly recommend you still spend a lot of your time in process mode, experimenting um, with other stylistic approaches, with other subjects, learning new skills, continually kind of just improving the, the tools that you have in your belt to bring to the easel. Um, and until you've reached that magic, magic destination where you're consistently creating great work with a unique voice, 
where the public loves the work, you love the work and you love the process until you get there, don't stop on that journey. And as I say, that's what I see most artists doing. They stop when they are able to create work that the public likes, and then they spend the rest of their life trying to market that. And how do you know when the public loves your work? They will tell you, they will come up to you and tell you, oh my God, I love your work. Um, I've had people stand in front of my booth and actually cry and have tears in their eyes and then tell me that that my work just really, really moves them or it makes them happy. It just, it just reaches out and engages them. So if the people are saying that's nice or, or they're buying your work, you know, because it goes with the couch or anything like that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But until people are reacting with like an over the top kind of gushing reaction to your work and actually telling you that they love your work, and a lot of people, um, until that happens, then my advice is, is, to, is not stick with just one style, but continually push your creativity, experiment with many, many other styles until you find that. Now, there are things that you can do to actually speed up the process of developing your own unique voice. And that's actually something I'm gonna cover um, in, in an upcoming video. Now, this channel as well is meant for people who are interested in the business of being an artist. So selling your work. Um, I do get a lot of comments from people that say, well, I don't want to sell my work. And it's like, that's fine. But then take everything on this channel with a grain of salt, because this channel and the reason that I'm putting this content out there is for people who are like I was, where their dream is to actually make a decent living as an artist. Um, and if you want to learn more about selling your work, I actually have, I've created a live webinar that you can watch for free, um, on the 10 keys that I believe are essential to selling your work. And you can do that by going to www.aspiringartist.ca, go to that website. And that's actually the webinar is on the website running every 15 minutes. You'll need to input your uh, email. Um, and name and um, the webinar will start in a few minutes and you can learn everything that I know about selling your art. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you next time.